from the message you left in my office, I take it you got a problem. Yeah, a big one. Remember me telling you how concerned I was about the adoption? I remember you were concerned over an interview you had with Mrs. Endicott. Yeah, well, I had good reason to be. The whole thing blew up in our faces. We lost Mike. You've, what do you mean you've lost him? Well, Mrs. Endicott came over to our house the day before yesterday and told us the adoption was not going to be finalized, that she had to pick up Mike. So she came back that afternoon after he got back from school and she took him away. She... Just, just like that? Why, Peter? Well, that's the extraordinary part. She wouldn't give us a reason. She said it was just something that the board had decided on and it was out of our hands. We tried to argue with her, told her what kind of progress we made with Mike and how much we cared for him. But it was no good. She just said, I'm sorry. Sorry! Well, I guess I don't have to tell you what kind of state Diana's in. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just shocked. Well, how could she do something like that without even giving you some kind of explanation? I don't know, but she did. Look, what I need to know now is do we have any legal recourse? I mean, can they come like that and just take him away? Don't we have any rights? Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to research that. But I promise you, I'll get into it right away and see what can be done. All right, Lee. But I'm telling you, we're not going to take this lying down. No, no, of course not. Well, it, it just seems senseless on the face of it and cruel. I know what a blow this must have been to both of you. And it's worse than you can imagine, Lee. I keep telling Diana to control her emotions, but I'm just as shaken as she is. Mike has become a part of our lives, and to lose him now, it... it's like a death in the family. I'm sorry, Mrs. Taylor, but there's really no point in your coming here. It's useless. Useless. I am fighting to keep the child I love. Do you think you can take him away without my saying something or doing something? There's nothing you can do. Nor I. My hands are completely tied. By what? Bureaucracy or, or red tape? We are not talking about the repossession of a car or a piece of furniture. We're talking about a child. A little boy who needs us just as much as we need him. I understand your position, and I sympathize. I don't want your sympathy. I'm not here to be pacified. Mrs. Endicott, you can't destroy a family and then just apologize. I have a little girl at home wondering where her brother is, and I can't explain why he was taken away. I, if, if, if we'd mistreated him or if he'd been unhappy, I would have understood that. But he loves us just as much as we love him. I know he does. Well, doesn't that count for something? I mean, think of all the foster homes he's been in and been miserable. He's come back here bitter. And now there's a place that wants him. And he wants to be there. And you've taken him away. I don't understand it. Don't you have any regard for his emotional well-being? Oh, you're making this so difficult. Well, I mean to make it difficult. I want it to be as hard on you as it is on us. I have tried to explain to you that it is a board decision. I deplore it as much as you do. But I am powerless to change it. I'm only an employee here, after all. I, I don't have the final say. Well, who does? Who can I go to to appeal this? Because I'm not going to do what you tell me. I'm not going to just forget it. We deserve more than this. And we're going to fight for Mike as hard as we can. Is it, Monica? I'm upset, Gail. I need someone to talk to. Well, by all means, talk to me. What's wrong? Uh, this uh, whole situation is freaking lightly in me. It's, it's tearing at me. Well, I have to admit, I'm not surprised. I mean, you're the architect of the whole thing, after all. I only did what I thought was right. It hasn't been easy for me, if that's what you think. But hard as it's been, I felt I was doing it for Rick's ultimate good. And yours? Yes, mine, too. For both of us. Oh, Monica! All right, I, I know you don't see it that way, but I did. 
And I've acted the way I had to, according to my own nature. I mean, somewhere, somehow, there has to be what I want, too. And life goes too fast. You have to reach out and take it, or else you lose the chance. It's one thing to have an opportunity. It's another to create it at any price. I told you from the beginning that you would never be anything but miserable from this whole plan of yours. But you decided somehow that, that you had the right to manipulate other people's lives. And look what it's brought you. Chaos, unhappiness, wreckage everywhere you look. Do you remember me as a child in the foundling home? Hmm? I was unwanted. And I was passed over time and time again. Loneliness can do terrible things to people, Gail. And I wanted so desperately to be loved. You know that. You know how I was. Yes, I do remember. But you can't demand love from anyone. You can't force it. I've never been sure of that. I felt I'd been cheated, and I was going to find it for myself. I thought I had the right to go out there and fight for it, no matter what it took and no matter what it cost. The only trouble is you... you don't know what it is. You're like... I don't know, you're, you're, you're like a blind man trying to describe an elephant. Jeff loves you. Oh, my Lord, how he loves you, and, and you... You've never done anything but reject him and humiliate because him. Because I wanted the man I loved, not his brother. Am I right or wrong? I have never lied to myself. I knew what I was doing, and I did it. I was so sure, so certain. Until now. And now? I don't think I can finish what I started. beginning to wake up to what it means. Because I realize I care too much about Rick to rob him of a dream he's had all his life. A chance to be chief of cardiac surgery. When did this happen? As soon as I heard he'd been given the, the opportunity. And then today, when he stood here talking to me about it, oh, I wish you could have heard him. It was as if he stood an inch from finding the Holy Grail. How can I take that away from him? I'd like to think that you wouldn't. But even if you did, I, I never thought it would all end up the way you wanted it to. I did. Apparently you and Leslie knew better than I. I guess Leslie has known right from the beginning that I would never carry out my threat. Even though I thought I could. So, I'll never have what I want. Unless we win. Who invented the human heart, I wonder? Tell me. And then show me the place where he was hanged. You know, whoever wrote that moniker, he must have had you in mind. I'm so excited about the wedding. I know everything's going to be just beautiful for Rick and you. And I have a confession to make. About what? Well, when you were in the hospital and I came to see you, I was so depressed. Were you? Why? Well, I thought you changed in some way. That you weren't the same Leslie that I'd known. And I talked to Rick about it. I even poured my heart out to your tape recorder. Just listen to this. You'll see how dumb I can really be. Well, no, honey, you don't have to do that. But I want you to hear it. Rick is trying to make me see that you're going to pull out of this one and be yourself again, Leslie. He's gone down to change clothes, and then he's going to take me out to dinner and try to cheer me up and make me forget. But I can't. It's so scary to see how close the three of us were, and now it's all different. Oh, um, honey, I, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I just uh, realized that I, I, 
Student nurse roster, so I guess we can leave them here together. Well, I imagine they'll be safe, yes. Andre, we were talking earlier about Tommy. Have you thought about it anymore? I doubt if I've thought about anything else. But if you're asking me if I've come up with any brilliant ideas about getting back into his good graces, no, I'm afraid I haven't. Well, this mood he's in, uh, I'm sure will pass. He's old enough to understand that uh, he can't arrange other people's lives just to suit himself. Darling, obviously he isn't, or he wouldn't have tried to pull off that act of being sick in order to get Tom and me back together. Then he has to be made to understand. He's got to be told. Have you tried to talk to him about it yet? No. No, I haven't talked to him since last night when I called to invite him out to dinner. And he told me in no uncertain terms that he prefers being with Tom. Obviously, then he's trying to punish you. He probably feels if pity wouldn't bring you back, then maybe anger would. But you can't let it go on that way. Oh, darling, I don't know what to do. I mean, I've disappointed him. I'm afraid I've turned him against me by doing it. No, no, you haven't, Andre. Now, look, I'd like to make a suggestion. Oh, I wish you would. You leave the hospital early today, go pick Tommy up at school, and go to some place special. See if you can't get it all straightened out by having a good old-fashioned heart-to-heart talk. No, 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 I don't think that's a good idea. That would be forcing him. I can't do that. No, he'd have to come to me at his home free will and in his own good time. But I'm afraid, I'm afraid that time may never come. I, I'm afraid he's away from me for good. And I tell you, that's not true. Audrey, you can't let yourself be tyrannized by him. You have your own life to live. Darling, it isn't tyranny. He loved me, or he did. Nonsense. Love doesn't die that easily. He still loves you and wants to be with you. But he wants you on his own terms, and that can't be. Not unless you're willing to sacrifice your own life. And that wouldn't be right, would it? I don't know what's right anymore. I don't know anything. Well, the irony of this whole situation is that if Jeff had told me about his affair with Heather, before Rick proposed to Leslie, I would have had a clean way out. I could have divorced Jeff for a logical reason, and no one could have criticized me for it, especially Rick. Well, what do we have here? Some kind of delegation? Oh, no, just passing time day. No, no, really, I, I just stopped by to leave a file on a patient that Leslie's referring. So, it's on your desk. Good. Thank you very much, Gail. Well, now that I've done that, I guess I'd better get back to the salt mine. <laughs> I'll, uh, see you both later. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. I just came from recovery. Mr. Bartell is going to be just fine. Oh, I'm glad. His wife is terribly concerned about him. Do you know when he'll be back in his room? Within an hour, I'd say. Well, she's waiting to see him, and I told her I'd let her know when, so I'll go tell her. Thank you. Hi, is uh, Dr. Weber here? Well, there are two of us. Which one do you want to see? Dr. Rick Weber. That's me. Dr. Faulkner said this, that it was to be delivered personally. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, wait just a second. There you go. Thanks a lot. I want you to tell Monica to ride that Bartell case for me. I also want her to supervise the transfer from recovery. But I'm going out of the hospital for a while. I don't know how long I'll be. 